This is Nicole Kali, host of Haunted Mid-Atlantic Tales. And once again, I am here to say that it is okay to embrace the supernatural. It is a very hard part of life and the grieving process to have to connect with loved ones and people that you may not know who have passed on. For example, DMX has become an ancestor officially Rest in peace, Earl Simmons, DMX, the rapper, Rough Rider, from New York City. And since this is a mid-Atlantic rapper, we're listening to Back in One Piece by him and Aaliyah, which is one of my favorite songs and definitely on repeat during my childhood. They both had an interest in the supernatural for sure. I'm sure that y'all have seen Queen of the Damned. If not, Aaliyah is the titular character. Queen of the Damned Akasha from ancient Egypt. And if you look at some documentaries about Aaliyah, you'd actually hear from her and people that know her that she had a, a huge interest in playing dark characters and looking into that part of Aaliyah's ancestry. DMX was part of the underground rock and metal scene in New York City. He played at Bazaar Royale's Ghetto Metal Nights at SOBs and other locales throughout the uh, Lower East Side, I think. I have to say, it's an amazing scene, for sure. The underground rock scene and punk and NYC and, you know, just up and down the mid-Atlantic coast. I really encourage you to look into artists like DMX, not just because he passed away, but because he was badass. Look into Aaliyah. Look into Woven In and the artists that I featured on Black Rockers United's 40 Rockers who are shaking it up. Yes, you know, we had to do it to y'all because there is so much room for representation of Black artistry, and especially in such an overlooked scene, you know? How many people know who Meredith Bell is, yet she's performed at so many places and has such an, an amazing like depth of talent you know and she's just a really fun person how many people know who kayla dixon is of which mountain how many people know kilo Kish? haunted mid-atlantic tales is interweaving the elements of life that i find interesting and important and so is black rockers united without further ado rest in peace to alia dmx many who we've lost before. And let's get into some more tales of the supernatural. Chapter 85, Miscellaneous Vignettes. Author's note, a gentleman identified only as G from Williamsburg wrote the following sketch that's exerted here and published in the Southern Literary Messenger in November, 1839, a Virginia newsletter. Now, he is apparently not a believer. The universality of the belief in ghosts is generally brought forward as an argument in favor of their existence, but it appears to me not to be one. I think that it may be explained on rational principles. Besides their belief in ghosts, all nations have had one other supernatural beings too. As these beings do not really exist, there must be some tendency in the human mind to imagine their existence. And this tendency, it appears to me anyway, consists in an inherent desire, which all humans have, of assigning to every effect a cause. There are an innumerable amount of operations in nature which they cannot account for. There are, particularly at night, many sounds floating through the air, and many appearances of natural objects, whose cause is concealed. Humans, then, on account of this tendency which I have supposed, are led to solve the difficulty by imagining them to be the work of supernatural beings. Now, the reason that ghosts are more universally believed than any other supernatural essence is the first. It's very natural to suppose that those with whom we have lived in terms of love, fame, or friendship even, will not leave us, if possible, even in death. Second, on account of this feeling, right? And the tendency which I have supposed above, it's more natural for humans to attribute effects whose cause is unknown to the spirits of the dead than to imagine other beings in order to account for them because we imagine ourselves first before anyone else, right? Third, as these circumstances are more common to all of humanity, this belief has been universalized. 
That's interesting. So he basically thinks that because it's part of the collective consciousness to tell these stories, that that's all that they are, just narratives. I could definitely see that in like in a philosophical sense being true, but in a material sense, the supernatural is very real and it's not imagined. A lot of the lore and the accounts unsettling, but um, enlightening the things that have happened in the supernatural realm. And you have to definitely relay what happened in a way that is believable. Then perhaps you're onto something. Chapter 86, one of my favorite chapters, a sampling of spectral snippets. Outside of Marion in Smith County, there's an octagonal house, Abijah Thomas built it in 1850 to protect it from wind damage. The eight-sided house has long been abandoned, possibly because it has been said that blood seeps down one of the walls and that screams echo at night. This is a tearjerker, y'all. Chapter 108, A Reunion That Transcends Worlds. Author's note, as readers of recent editions in the series of Virginia Ghost are aware, I like to close each book with a chapter that is uplifting and, if possible, poignant. The following not only qualifies as such, but is one of the most compelling and touching accounts I have experienced in nearly 25 years of writing about the paranormal in Virginia. It would make a great story for the Oprah Winfrey Show, or Unsolved Mysteries, or perhaps the Montel Williams Show when it was still running and psychic Sylvia Brown was present. It was related to me on October 2nd, 2005, while I was signing books at the Newport News Fall Festival. The source was two delightful, gorgeous young women. Enjoy. Melody DeRosa was born in September 1960, and she never knew her father, Richard Wayne Strickland. He left her mother at or around Melody's birth and simply disappeared. But a year or so later, he surfaced in Hampton, Virginia again, married and had three children, Tina, Holly, and Ricky. Meanwhile, Melody's mother remarried and Melody's new stepfather adopted Melody. In time, she discovered the adoption papers and asked who her birth father was, but they refused to tell her. Years later, when her mother and her stepfather broke up, he finally told her that Wayne was her real father, but he didn't know where he was, that he said that Wayne had a brother, Frank, living somewhere in North Carolina. Eventually, Melody was able to track down the uncle, and he told her that he didn't know where Richard was either, but then he shocked her. He told her that she had two sisters and a brother living in Virginia. Melody continued her lifelong search for her father and finally found that he had moved to Florida, leaving behind his second family. But tragically, he died shortly before she could reach him. During that same period, Tina, Holly, and Ricky also learned about the uncle and the fact that their father had now passed away and that they had a sister that they never knew. Tina and Melody met for the first time at the uncle's house early in 2005, the same year that they told me the story. Melody lives in Albany, New York now, came to Virginia a few months later for the reunion then with her long lost two sisters and brother. It was the first time they had all ever been together. They met on Saturday night, October 1st at the Outback Steakhouse in Hampton, Virginia. It was the most joyful occasion for them as the four and their children gathered a true family reunion. They took some photos of the group, and then someone suggested that the reunited sisters and brother pose for a picture together. A digital camera was used, and the photographer shook his head when he saw the photo. Strangely, there was a cloudy, wispy, grayish line of streaks that ran throughout it. The previous pictures were totally fine. So the four siblings changed positions and took another picture, but it too had the same harsh blemish running throughout it. Some professional parapsychologists believe that such an image is caused by a spirit in motion. It's called a vortex. Melody and Tina laughed nervously, looked upward and said half jokingly, it's okay, dad, we're all together. We're fine, you can go home now. And after that, all pictures taken were clear as a bell. Their father just needed to hear that they would be together and okay without him had issues as far as sleeping and things like that and I don't like to be in unfamiliar surroundings when I go to I bed. I see there's a you know, pile of change and pennies um, by my purse. It was all pennies, which was odd. I didn't remember these pennies. That 
whatever. I'm, I'm trying to get out of the room, you know, who cares, you know, I'm fleeing in terror. And we don't think that she really wanted to leave because so much of her life was involved in putting this grand place together. Lydia, she'd let us know. Lydia makes her presence known in many ways. Strange footsteps are heard when no one else is in the building. Haunted places, a national directory, Delaware, Newcastle, David Finney Inn, built in 1683. This inn was once the home of lawyer soldier David Finney. The identity of the ghost haunting the third floor, however, is unknown. But the windows open and objects move by themselves. Dogs refuse to step onto that floor at all, as if they sense some disincarnate presence. 2 p.m. still has for a similar story related to David Finney. New Jersey, Phillipsburg, the Hunt Homestead. The ghost of a woman wearing a dark cloak and a hood passes by the kitchen window here. Same. She proceeds toward the back door and then vanishes into thin air. Ooh, not quite the same. But I like her outfit. The woman's apparition is followed the same routine hundreds of times. Most likely, over the years, the people have seen her. Thousands. The phenomenon began shortly after the building was renovated in 1976. Parts of the house were built in 1772, though, by Edward Hunt, but the main structure was completed in 1825 by his grandson, and unfortunately he passed away in the house in 1864, and his wife Mary Inslee Hunt lived there until her death in 1882. So it's a very storied place, and they spent a lot of their last years there. Phillipsburg is on Highway 57, across the Delaware River, from Allentown, Pennsylvania. New York, New York City, the Metropolitan Opera House, the obnoxious ghost of Madame Frances Alda, wife of director Giulio Gatti Casaza, has been observed sitting in the center seat of the Met. The large woman wears a silk dress and makes disparaging remarks about performers, especially young sopranos, because that's what she was. She disappears from sight when approached. The Opera House is at Broadway and West 64th Street, Pennsylvania, Allentown, Mullender College. The ghost of Bernheim House is Oscar Bernheim, the former registrar who willed his house at the college. His ghost is seen in the attic, in the basement, in the rear garden, also the third floor bedroom where he passed away. And Mullender College is in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Bristol, the St. James Episcopal Cemetery, an old iron chair next to the tombstone of Mary P. Wright is called the Witch's Chair. And the legend says that if you sit in the chair at midnight during the month of October, the arms of the witch will encircle you. Not far from the dreaded chair, dreaded, that sounds cool, is the grave of Gertrude Spring, thought to be the source of the Midnight Mary legend on Bordentown Road, who passed away in May in a car accident on Bristol Pike. And I think it's a combined legend, actually, of another local witch that lived nearby. But my whole thing is, the arms of a witch encircling you may not always be a bad thing. Some of us have probably been hugged by witches and not even known. By the way, the cemetery is on Cedar Street in Bristol, Pennsylvania. If you ever want to go and take a look for yourself. Virginia, Fredericksburg, Lambs Creek Church. A woman in white is seen kneeling at the chancel rail here. The sightings date back to the Civil War, when the church built in the 1770s was used as a stable by the Union forces. But the church is restored in 1908, and afterwards was rarely used for the ghosts that perpetually haunted. Williamsburg, Nicholson House. The presence of noted violinist Cuthbert Ogle is still felt in the house where he lived in the mid 1700s. Cuthbert's ghost gently touches people on the shoulder and makes loud scratching sounds at night. The two story frame house was built by Robert Nicholson, who so named the house, and took in borders for many years. Ogle died on April 23rd, 1755, but has never left. Haunted Virginia, 
by Pamela K. Kinney. Chapter 16. Monstrous Creatures, Y'all. The Monster Haunting Highland County. Something terrorized Highland County at one point in time. Sounding like a goose in distress. <laughs> Two fireballs were seen, and something messed with one young man's hair, scaring him so much that he passed out and then ran away. One resident of the area, Mrs. Griffith, was a teenager at the time that the thing caused such a ruckus, but she didn't believe any of the stories. So with her and her boyfriend and a nine-year-old girl, her cousin, went out one night after church to investigate the truth. The moon shone brightly and it made it easy for all of them to see. They came to the fence when the young man had his incident and climbed up to sit upon it. They heard a noise. It appeared to come from a sinkhole below. The sound seemed to come closer and closer to the fence. It's just a sheep under a tree, said her boyfriend. Out of nowhere, a strong wind shoved them off of the fence backward. The thing then jumped onto their backs, and they could not see it, but even with the clear moon night. When it got off of them, they bolted off in fright. It seemed to be close on their heels, as they can feel it breathing upon the back of their neck. Now, when the stories are told of the thing, Mrs. Griffiths swears on a stack of Bibles that it is true. Thank you for joining this episode of Haunted Mid-Atlantic Tales 14. And remember, even if we don't always agree, we can find a way to coexist and reach solidarity. And that is not always with humans. <laughs>